Hey folks, happy holidays. It is Christmas Eve here in the United States of America, and it is time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 47. This is Twip. Hey, happy holidays, and welcome back to another episode of the Twip Pro Photo Critique. It is Christmas Eve, Santa's flying around, and as you can see by my little uh, green screen Christmas tree behind me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is that time of year, you know, and we're in my red and all that. Joining me to talk about some of the submissions into the Twit Pro Photo community is my festive partner in crime here, Mr. Troy Miller. <laughs> Troy, that's all you can muster, man, is that Christmas tree? I, really? No, look, yeah, it's... it's... <laughs> That oh, you got two Christmas there. tree. Yeah, look at that one back there. I've had that one for four years. It's been on for four years. So, <laughs> what about the one on you? Has that one been on for four years? As it's well? been on for four minutes. Because <laughs> the flashing is going to drive me crazy before too long. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, good man. It is. Uh, it is good to see you. Thanks for doing this on Christmas Eve. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, this is fun. Yeah, this is good. This is good. You know, and we we've, we've got. You know, I was thinking we were going to have a couple of submissions to go through being a holiday weekend but we've got we've got a good crop of things to go through this time right yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. like eight or nine so what uh before we dive in i gotta know what what do you are, are you hoping santa brings you this year oh geez uh a drone and a drone and <laughs> <laughs> you already know you looked at the credit card statement right? <laughs> i i actually have no idea um I really don't. Yeah, I have I have no clue what, nice. what's what. Nice. I am. Uh, what am I hoping for? Uh, well, you know, I'm a nerd, right, and a podcaster. So there's this mic that a, a Barry and X Perillo of the Candid Frame podcast, and and who else has it? Uh, Joe Rogan has this mic. You know, it's it's kind of like the fashionable mic. It's a sure. Uh -oh. I forget what the model name is. It's <laughs> it's a sure mic. I've been dropping hints about that mic, so I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I want that mic. What else do I want? Um, uh, I have pretty much everything I need. I wanted that. Well, I want a motorcycle, but I don't think Santa is going to bring me <laughs> a motorcycle or a trike. I'm on the fence. Do I? I'm on the fence between the Can Am trike or a proper quote motorcycle. So you know, I, I oscillate between the two, and I've I've watched YouTube videos and talked to people, and the world seems to be split between. If you get a three wheeler, you're not really a motorcyclist. You're, you're <laughs> let's, let's just say people say you're something else other than a motorcyclist. Um, if you get a motorcycle, it's not as safe as a trike, but then you can't do cool things like, I mean, you, well, if you get a trike, you can't lane split or do anything like that. But on a motorcycle, you have more power, more flexibility, it's more hip, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. This, this may be a pipe dream. I mean, I I'll probably end up getting nothing, but. <laughs> Or a scooter. You know? <laughs> or a scooter. <laughs> hey, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, man? I, I need two wheels. I'm feeling the call of two wheels. I need it. Yeah, so. The two wheels, a backpack with a camera in it, you know, driving down Highway 1 in California in the summer. See, Some... then, you need, then you need an enduro. So you can take mountain roads and go off-road. I don't know if I want to do all that mess. I don't know if I can. Oh, I don't want to. I just want to ride around and be in the air and feel the power of the throttle. And you know, I guess I'm answering my own question. If I want to be able to clutch, <laughs> you know, use a clutch, I'm going to need a proper motorcycle, right? So, right, right. See, problem solved. Problem what else? Solved. What else can we solve today? Problem solved. Although last night, completely off topic. Um, last night, I was looking at YouTube videos on the the coming wave of electric motorcycles particularly the ones from harley davidson have you seen those i have not nope they're badass they, they look they look killer you know but they're electric and you know we have to we'll have to see that would be cool to have an electric motorcycle i think the range of those things is like i don't know between 50 and 80 miles per charge and then three hours to charge it up depending on the technology but you know hey but then again, I see, look at you. Look at you condescending. <laughs> look, you're so, the silence is deafening. <laughs> uh, if, you can't, if you can't smell the exhaust, why, why have it? Oh, you're a purist. You sound like people with horses and buggies. You know, if you don't have to poop, if you don't have to scoop up the poop, 
It's not a real transportation vehicle. Oh God! <laughs> All right, if you that can't, was a if you can't that feed it and you can't hear it whinny, it's not a real transportation vehicle. <laughs> All right, well, stay tuned. Sometime in 2019, a motorcycle may show up or some sort of two-wheeled, possibly three-wheeled vehicle <laughs> may show up in my world. But who's to say that you need one? You could get a motorcycle and a three-wheeler, right? <laughs> so, you know, space and budget. Allows. I'm with you. Yeah, do it. Whatever, whatever. You, know, you don't believe in me. <laughs> <laughs> all right man let's dive into uh into this week's submissions let me pull up twit pro here diving right. we are in the photo critique area of twit pro look at all these members we have in here man look at all this this is so awesome yeah all right uh the first one looks like it's from mike doran let's bring that up he says spending time with my niece mariah creating long exposure images priceless he shot this with his um, Canon 1DX with a 16 to 35 millimeter uh, f4 ISO 400 f8 at 8 8 full seconds. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, that looks like that moon that we just had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I I dig it. I dig it. I I wish I would have gone out and shot the moon, but I didn't get a chance to. It's um, hard to shoot the moon, right? Because it it, it ends up. I mean, especially with a long exposure, right? You're either going to end up with a hot spot like this, which clearly it is the moon, but there's right. no detail in the moon, right? Right. Um, it's just a hot spot or, or not. So I guess if, you, if you're going to shoot the moon, you have to shoot the moon with intent or like I'm going to shoot the moon and I want to expose properly to get some detail in it or the foreground, you know, or everything <laughs> else or composite them together. What, what do you think? Well, I think you need to be there at the right time for the shot you're going to take. Like he's doing long exposure, so you're never going to get uh, you never get that moon in there. Um, I don't like seeing moons composited in because you know immediately that that's that's mostly going to be fake, right? Like a night shot like this with any kind of detail is not going to happen. Um, you can get detail in the moon uh, and and front lit landscape if you're there like the day before the full moon. You know, because a lot of times the moon will rise slightly before the sun sets. That's mm -hmm. the best time to do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This year, the 2019 is my year of chasing the moon. I've yes, been, so. I've, I've, I haven't gotten the moon shots that I wanted in it's so long. And next year, I'm, I want to chase the moon. That's what I'm doing what about, in the daytime. What about astrophotography? You gonna do any of that? No, no. Yeah. That's. Oh, you're, nah. you're, you're Nikon. You're new Nikon. I won't be up late. That, right? <laughs> I don't want to be up late. You don't want to be up late. <laughs> Cold photographing. Wow. Maybe. maybe. Listen to the commitment to the art. Listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But, you know, to Mike's, to Mike's image, I, I love what he's done here. I love the, you know, the sweeping curve of that road. I just, what, what I would love to see is just crop it you know, from the bottom and from the left side and put that moon on like the left third, mm -hmm. just tighten it up. I think that that would be fantastic. Then you have this leading line of the, uh, of the road right to the moon, right? You've mm -hmm. got that nice little story right there. Yeah. 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 Again, if it's not adding to the image, get rid of it for the most right. part. Right. And then right. that dark area in the lower left is not really adding much to our image. Yeah. All right, cool. Mike, thank you very much for that. All right, next shot is from Armando Brook. Hey, Armando. He says, it's time to be happy. Street downtown of Sao Paulo, 50 millimeter, F18, ISO 6400, 160th of a second. Yeah, it's yeah. a cool shot. Yeah, yeah, it is. A lot of emotion. That's really neat. That's really neat. What is going on here? Like, what is, what, Armando, what is happening? Is this, is this like a festival or are people just walking or is like what's happening? People are in the middle of the street. It looks like they're walking down the street perpendicular yeah. to the crosswalk. I don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Like maybe it's like a street fair or mm -hmm. something. They got the streets closed off. I don't know. Big party going on, whatever it is. It's cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah. This is cool. Look how tech sharp the people in the foreground <clears throat> are. I know yeah, what you're gonna I'll... say though. Can I can I can I preempt yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I wanna preempt you. This is a game we play, you know. <laughs> Let's see if I can't get inside the mind of Troy Miller. So Troy Miller is going to say, yeah, this is great. Yeah, this is what we call it, you know, the uh, the, the the shit sandwich. Um, so <laughs> this is great. Not that this is shit. This is a great shot. Um, but you're going to say something about the dodging and burning on the couple <laughs> in the foreground and the darkness of the bottom lower left hand corner of the shot. Am I am I close? Uh, yeah, exactly right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. It's a little heavy handed on the vignette because I can see behind the couple on the street, you know, where it you didn't quite burn it in. In between his his leg, you can see where it didn't get burned in. So, um, yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But cool shot, man. Cool shot. All right. Armando, thank you very much, sir. Sao Paulo. Uh, Mark Harris is up next. Mark Harris, uh, what did he say? I'm just going to read a little bit of this. He says, my partner and also photographer and I vacationed in Antigua last week. Now you're just bragging. Just before leaving, <laughs> just before leaving, we hired a taxi and went to see and photographed Devil's Bridge. The location was the site of slave suicide, so I thought that the devil had to be there calling them. He shot this with his Nikon D600 with a Tokina 28 to 80 millimeter f2.8 at 35 millimeter and f11. Uh, one three twentieth of a second ISO 200. Then he converted this in Lightroom using the red filter profile. Let's bring this up. Wow. Yeah, th this is this is really cool. And I, I, you know, I had never seen this bridge before, so I looked it up. Um, and it's big. Like there's shots where the tide is way out. Mm -hmm. So this is crazy. And there's people walking on that bridge in some of the photos. And I'm like, that's just insane. Wow. You know, water is nasty. Um, I wish so, you had included, or, or I wish there was a, a way to have included something in here to give you a sense of scale. Because had yeah, you not said that, I wouldn't know how big it this is. It is enormous. It is really big. People on there look really small. Not tiny, tiny, but they're small. Yeah. Um, so this is this is going to be unusual. Actually, I'm going to see if you can predict what I'm going to say. Hmm. <laughs> oh, now the pressure's on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have no idea. I, I, uh, I, well, I, I know you don't like the, the <clears throat> horizon line bisected, bisecting the image. That's one. You you tend to, like, if the subject is in the lower part of the frame, you want to lose where the subject isn't. So you might say crop <laughs> down from the sky a I'm little being bit. being analyzed, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I can't really tell. I think the horizon's straight on this one, but... Yeah. You may say something along those lines. Otherwise, you're going to say something that has to do with cropping. I know that for sure. Uh, maybe a little bit. But, you know, really, really for me, this was one of those kind of images that when I looked at it, I had to keep looking at it to figure out what it was. Mm. Right. I mean, because I wasn't sure because it because the title is a bridge, but I wasn't sure if this was a shoreline. Uh, you know, what was going on. And then and you have so much dark and light going on and there's so much busyness, there's not a lot of separation. So initially, my, my first thought was, I wish this was in color mm -hmm. because the blue sky would separate from the crashing waves ah, uh, and the dark rocks. Yeah. And then, and that's one of the reasons I went and looked it up because I wondered what it looked like. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think in color, this could be a really, really nice image. So I would being be interested. A non conformist. Now you're just being a uh, non conformist. No. <laughs> like... It's about, it's a, but I think that color would add to this, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe the color of the water is, is not attractive, or maybe that just doesn't work. Um, but I think color might work really well. And then these kind of scenes, long exposures, if you can. Mm. Because, Show the you motion. know. Oh man, can you that that wave coming out of there, out of that hole, or on the other side, and just and just being all misty and yeah. I think it would be amazing. I love the shot. I mean, I dig the shot um, as it is, but those are things that immediately my brain went to. I agree. So if you combine your comments with my comments, where they're perfect, yeah, I would love that. <laughs> you know, well, I just want to see. I agree with everything you said for sure, but I just want to see something in here that gives me a sense of scale. That that and I said I would I was thinking before you even said you looked it up and and noted that this was gigantic, I was thinking in my head, well, how big is this? You know, and I'm looking at the waves. Well, I can't really tell by the size of the waves because they could be moving fast or slow. And you know, there's I don't see anything a tree or anything in here that could give me a hint or a clue as to how you know what the overall scale of this is. Which sounds like that's one of the selling points for this image is its overall scale, right? Right. Right. And my only other suggestion, and only because I looked it up, is when you go to a site and you have an opportunity to photograph where everybody else can go and photograph, you know, take that shot, but then ask yourself, like, how can I do this different? Mm -hmm. How can I shoot different than what anybody else would stand here and shoot? Yeah. And that, that, you know, this image, there's a few from this angle 
um, probably because there's an outcrop or it's easy to get to or whatever. Um, so, you know, think about that. Like, should I shoot really low? Should I shoot across the rocks? Should I do a long exposure? You know, um, that just adds to the variety from that location. Right, right. Yep, always do something a little bit different. Yeah, but good job, Mark. And I don't see any dust spots in the sky because I know you said you removed a bunch, so right. you did a good job. Normally, my brain goes right to a dust spot. And I'm like, yeah. ooh. All right, Thomas Aaron is up next. Uh, let's bring this up. He says, Thomas says, I'm practicing taking basic portraits in preparation for updating our church directory. I'll also be giving a digital file to the subjects who want it. This is my first attempt using studio slash artificial lighting other than on camera flash. Please let me know how to make it better. What better person to ask that question to <laughs> than a veteran wedding and portrait photographer, Troy Miller. Troy, what say you? How can he make this better? <laughs> well, I did. Uh, there is a comment in there for, for those of you that want to go read it because um, I, I, I shared that with him in the in the uh, post. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me, I, I love the lighting. The lighting is nice and soft for this type of portrait. It's it's appropriate, right? You don't want too much contrast. You don't really want to do too many fancy lighting techniques for for that type of shot, especially for like a uh, like the church directory, right? Or just a simple portrait. Mm -hmm. um, so lighting is soft. It's very attractive. It's filling her eyes. That's amazing. Uh, I, I would suggest, though, some more distance from the background and allow the light to fall off, you know, as it hits the background. So the background goes darker and, and that's going to. Yeah, she'll pop out, and that'll give a lot better separation. Yeah, yeah. And, and it'll probably go a little bit more out of focus, um, which can be really helpful. Yeah. And then and then just posing. You know, this to me feels a very stagnant pose. Like she's weight is balanced on both legs. Um, if she puts her weight on her front leg, allow that shoulder to drop a little bit. You know, you want to create an angle in that shoulder. Then I think that would be a more relaxed pose. Yeah. But any, any all the hard for, like <clears throat> for like he said this was for a church directory, right? So presumably right. he had a line of people or you know at least a group of people that needed to be photographed. Um, when you're doing that, and I, I assume you've done this before, but when you're doing that, you photo you need to do a similar photograph for a group of people, like for a corporate directory or for a church directory or for whatever purpose, where you need a series of images that look similar and are lit similarly to each other. How do you make sure that you're nailing it on each one? Do you do you like make sure that they all have the same direction? Do you, you know, what's, what are some tips about, you know, making sure that, I mean, you don't, you don't want to be artistic on each one. Obviously you don't have time to right. do that, but you still want to be, you want an aesthetically pleasing non cookie cutter portrait for each one. How do you do that? Well, that's, that's really tough because you can only move a body so many different ways to, you know, and looking at the camera and especially for like a church directory, it's going to really come from expression. It's going to yeah. come from you talking to them and trying to get a natural smile, right? Yeah. Instead of just a smile and then you get a corny grin, they're not going to be happy with that. Right. Um, and in, in order to get the flow through quickly, there's a, you know, weight on your right leg, weight on your left leg, guys, hands in the pockets, thumbs in the pockets, it drops your shoulders down. And then the ladies or even the guys, I always tell them, you know, like put your hands like you're texting. So you drop your hands down and you hold your hands like you're texting oh. and it, it's a nice it's a nice, you know, hand position and it relaxes the shoulders. So just doing that and then for every pose, I would mimic I would show them exactly what I want them to do and I would mimic it. Mm -hmm. So I would do every pose. I was like, OK, stand right here and I would say put your weight on the right leg and I would do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, you know, turn your head this way, turn your head that way. And when you tell somebody to turn their head, you hold your finger up in front of you. And then you move your finger to the right or to the left, and they'll follow it. If you just say, turn your head to the left, sometimes they whip their head too far. Little tiny subtlety things like that, you can get everybody looking beautiful very quickly. And then, of course, you know, just a nice, wide, soft light projection, you know, with soft boxes and umbrellas so that there isn't a specific spot to put them in. They can kind of wiggle a little bit. Yep. You know, flexibility for them to move around. I love the, finger, yep. the fingertip because that's um, the... I, if I'm shooting models or whatever, I use that exact same thing where it's you almost connect an invisible string or yeah, line yeah. from your finger to their chin and just guide them with it. And, you know, you're you're basically puppeting them. But, uh, you know, right. You're, you're it's easy for them. them. Yeah. And if you you know, if you photograph models all the time and you tell a model, I need you to turn your head slightly to the left, they understand 
what that means. Mm -hmm. But the average person has no idea what slightly means. Right. You know, and then, then it gets uncomfortable, like turn left, no, no, too much, turn right, no, back, back, left a little bit. Now they're uncomfortable because they've made two mistakes. Right, right. You're like, I can't, I'm not getting this right. Now they're just tense <laughs> up and, yeah, you know, they're biting yep. the bottom lip during the shot. Yeah. And you can do two things at once where you say, okay, follow. Okay. I need you to turn your head slightly to the right. That's beautiful. Tilt your head this way. And while you're still moving your finger, they're still following mm-hmm. and you're, you're zoning them in because everybody has kind of a sweet spot in their face, like how far they need to turn left or right or whatever. So you need, you need to do a course on posing or something like that. Let's do it. Yeah. We got to do a course on posing because it, it, you know, that's that it, we say that tongue in cheek, but it's it, the the art of posing. There've been many, many, many books written on how to pose and then even the the you know how to interact with other humans while you're trying to do the pose thing right like right what, what do you say what don't you say what are some words that you can use to encourage people you know what don't you do like models don't touch them and move you know that that kind yep. of stuff you know and and for for the shot that thomas did like just being able to ferry through a reasonably large group of people and get consistent results, but not have it look like passport. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Right. And, and there's a lot of psychology in, in, in portraits <clears throat> and posing people, you know, if you pose models all the time, it's different. They're there to be in front of the camera. But if you have a client, a bride, uh, they're normally they're nervous. Mm-hmm. So there's a psychology to get them to relax. There's a, 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 maybe a cadence in your, in your tone and m- your movement and things like that, just to calm them down. Yeah. Cause you, you can't, you can't pose them otherwise. That's, that's the first thing for me is always getting the client comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a, it's a whole different story with children and babies and so <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're different. Yeah. They're a little, a little bit, different. A little bit. All right. Well, cool. Excellent shot here. Thank you for submitting that. Um, this is Thomas Aaron. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yep. All right. Moving right along. We're on the next one. Joshua Sommerfeld. Oh, back with these arachnids again. He said, uh, I suspect this is a spotted orb weaver. Looks like it has a cat face on its abdomen. This yeah. was shot with a Canon EOS 77D with a Tamron SP 90 millimeter F28 DI macro 90 millimeter at F8 for one two hundredth of a second at ISO 400. Let's bring this guy up. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think it's, I think it's freaking cool. Yeah, until you see it in your shower. <laughs> yeah, that better not be in my shower. Yeah. But. Uh... I love that cat face. That is amazing. That is. I didn't even notice that till he said it. Look at that. Yeah, that is that is amazing. Now you need a pet. Since you love cats, well, we love cats. But since you love yeah. cats so much, we need to get a spider pet like this. Oh, no, this is this is great. This is great. I, it, my, my only my only critique is is to center the crop. Mm. You know, I, I don't. Th- you know, this isn't something that needs space around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I love making people uncomfortable with insect photos. <laughs> and do that by cropping in really tight. You don't have to be tight, but you know, if you just gave it the same space on the right and the bottom as you did on the left and the top, it's going to really have a lot more impact. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I want to be closer on the spider because I, I find myself leaning into it. Because when, mm-hmm. when, when I see these kind of shots, I'm like, can I see the hairs on this thing? And spiders in particular, like, I want to see the eyes. Where are the eyes at? You know, because what spiders have eight eyes, right? I want to see. I want to see those eyes. And yeah. you can't because you're not close enough on this one. But you can see that cat face, can't you? Yeah. But you know what? What might be also cool is I'm looking at this and it looks like the abdomen is slightly out of focus. And, you know, the face is a little bit more in focus. If that's a face, if you can call that a spider face. The the legs on the spider, are like those two left legs, um, yeah. camera camera right or, or, or left, um, those seem to be a little bit soft. So it's sharp. I was looking at that. It's sharp down at the tips. And that's, that's a testament to that macro lens, right? It's sharp yeah. down at the tips of the spider's legs and then gets a little softer up towards his, you know, his second knuckle there. Kind of. Yeah. And the closer you get in the, you know, macro, your shot, your depth of field just, just dissipates, right? Oh like you God, have yeah, such a shallow depth of field. Minuscule. What what might be what might be cool is for um, for Joshua is to go back and look at the interview you did with Don Komarechka, because I think he he did didn't he do one about like focus stacking? He talked he about like he how did. to do that, yeah. and he hand holds snowflake photos. Right. 
right? And so in this situation, you could do, you could shoot three or four images and then stack them and choose where you want the focus point to be. Yeah. Yeah, and provided, just, provided that the spider is stationary. I mean, if you're outdoors and the spider is on a web and there's any sort of breeze out there, this thing is moving good all point. over the place. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he's gonna move for you through your depth of field. There shot. you go. Yeah, just you be stationary and let it do your focus stacking for you. Don't get too close; it'll end up on your forehead. Yeah. Well, Joshua, just go go to thisweekinphoto.com and search for Don Komarechka. And, um, you know, from that point, you know, if you if you search for Don Komarechka, you'll I think I did a couple of interviews with him. Um, but the latest one I think I did or one of the latest ones is with, um, you know, he talks about this image, the fo the uh, focus stacking and all that. Yeah. Is that, that's the one that has the cover image of it looks like a, like water droplets on a pedal or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A pink pedal. Yep. I, I, I can't remember like what I had for dinner yesterday, but I can see that. <laughs> oh. God. Yeah, that's cool. Don knows his stuff with that. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move right along to the next shot here. And thanks for that shot, Aaron. Joshua Sommerfeld. Okay, moving down the line here, Candy Shively. Candy, I think Candy's brand new to the TWIP community, right? I, I don't recall seeing this name too often in here. Yay, Candy. Hey, welcome. Candy says, here's a recent photo from a vintage style photo shoot. This was based on 20s photos from the Ziegfeld Follies and of actresses. I should also mention that even though this is my first submission, I've been watching the critique show long enough to know it's always better. <laughs> and I see what you've done, Troy Miller. You oh. polluted the community with your black and white heresy. No, no. no pollution <laughs> at all. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't get this one to load. For some reason, we need to do a whole we need to do a whole noir episode where where you and I are just in black and white as we go through the images. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Reverse <laughs> it. Yeah, we can do that. I can do that in Final Cut Pro. You know that, right? <laughs> I know. But look at the shot. This looks like a this could easily be a painting, right? Yeah, this is yeah, this is really beautiful. I love her expression. You know, it's it's the 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 texture, the coloring, not the coloring, but, you know, the toning of the image is fantastic. Uh, I really love where where she's going with this. Yeah. No. Yeah. So from a from a wet, you know, like the other shot from a wedding and portrait photographer's perspective, is there anything that you would change with this one? Is it a um, or let's let's put a finer point on it. If this was placed in image comp would this would this place in an image competition? Uh, this, this wouldn't merit the way that it is here. Uh, a and couple things, well, a couple things is her left shoulder because she's actually leaning on it and she's putting pressure on it. It's lifting her left shoulder and that looks very unnatural. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, if you notice the distance from her right shoulder to her left shoulder is unbalanced, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if she was to take her weight off that left hand, lay it in front of her, lay it in her lap, uh, something like that, that sh that left shoulder would drop a lot yeah. and that would open up her face and minimize the size of her shoulder. I thought you so, said something like her, her, one of her arms is missing and you'd want to see a little bit of the other arm. In the, not, not so much in, in a profile like this. I mean, it's okay <clears throat> because if she, I can't see her right arm unless she brings it way back unnaturally and tries to show, you know, a triangle with her arm. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or but brought it up to like put it in her hair or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, and then I think it would be, it would be more complicated, right? You'd have more shapes in there. Right. So really, it's just about that left shoulder just really needs to relax, and then, um, you 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 have almost a perfect profile, except you can see her eyelashes on her right eye. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're gonna get this close to a perfect profile, make it a perfect profile. Mm -hmm. You know, just turn her head slightly to the right, or just fix it in post. Take it out. I was you gonna know. ask. Yeah. Can you just take yeah. It out? Yeah. And then the only other the only other thing that I really see in here is I can I can see a tan. I can see tan lines on her back. So oh, right. The like crisscross. Yeah. 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 And that's that's easy to, to dodge and burn and clone a little bit of that out and bring the brightness on her back up a little bit. So it matches her face. Not as much. Mm -hmm. But you can see we have three tones, right? Her face, the middle of her back and then her left arm. Mm -hmm. And they compete. We want to see her face first. And then her body, and then the rest of the image. So, would you want to? Would you? 
is it good practice to have all the skin tones, the face, the arm, and the back the same? Is that what she's going for? Is to have them the same tone? Or do you want the face a little bit brighter than the rest? Because that is, you know, ostensibly the, the topic of the photo. I, I would say for the most part, generally speaking, you would want the face to be slightly, slightly brighter mm -hmm. um, if it's not going to stand out on its own by the pose. Right. When you have this much skin in an image, you know, what are we what are we going to look at? We're losing her face because the back is so prominent. The left elbow is bright, you know, so you'd want to bring those down just a little bit like a vignette. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. I love the shot. This this, yeah, this is definitely like we were great, saying yeah. we used to say in the beginning this is definitely print worthy right this could be oh on yeah. Wall. yeah yeah easily yeah. on a wall with a nice ornate frame and or not you know it's just a beautiful shot yeah and if you do this pose again and you drop that left shoulder um have her look down because then she'll, she'll her eyes will parallel her left shoulder as it drops down it gives a very quiet even seductive type of look it's yeah. really nice yeah for sure awesome all right Oh, there we go. Candy Shivali. Thank you very much for that shot. Yeah, that was great. All right. Laura Patton is next. And Laura says, I asked the couple to stand still as they could during the long exposure of the Milky Way. I used a cell phone flashlight to add a quick burst of light to open up the foreground elements. That's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. I love the shot. I love the shot. Because I'm a nerd for this kind of stuff, but I, I dig the shot a lot. I know what you're going to say, but I love the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Run with it. You know you know me well enough. I know. No, I'm going to let you say it. I know, I know what you're going to say. But no, I, I dig the shot. I love the Milky Way. I love, I've never seen a shot where someone did this with it, where they, you know, added sort of the flashlight foreground element to interact with the Milky Way, you know, in this obvious way. That is, that's just very clever and very slick. What are you, what are yeah. you going to say, Troy? Go ahead. Well, I, I, I wish they had feet. I just, I knew it. I knew it. You, you, you and your amputations. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they had feet. Um, the foreground element on the right, I think, I think it would look better as a silhouette. I really mm -hmm. do. I think the I think the entire image could be brought down in exposure, so that you know, if you want to accentuate the beam, let the beam be accentuated, and and let the sky, let the Milky Way, really be your subject, your primary subject, and then your 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 people, your couple there as your secondary subject. Mm -hmm. um, right now, they're competing. Yeah. So I would bring the exposure down and, and I would probably dodge in the, the, the foreground just to have just a little bit of detail or, you know, the reeds or the grass or whatever is on the right. Yeah. 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 But I like it. Very creative. That's, that's really what about, cool. What about the border? How do you feel about that? The presentation is nice. I mean, I like that, you know, we've talked about that a little bit. I like that, that, that whole concept of, you know, putting it on a mat. Um, so no, it works. It works for me. I like it. Very cool. All righty, moving right along. Laura, thank you very much for that. All right, the next shot, second to last, is from Gigi Imbrix. And Gigi says, here's a photo uh, I would like for the critique. I saw these dogs and was drawn by how all three were looking at me. I got low and quickly snapped the images. The background was horrible. Uh, what, when that happens, I do texture work to eliminate the background. I think it gave this image an old painterly look. Yeah. Bravo on the getting down yes. low. Yes. Yeah, because that's that's a problem with pets and kids, you know, children, is that the adults tend to shoot from their perspective, not realizing that the subject, they don't see from that, you know, perspective. They're down low. So get yeah. down nice and low. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Very majestic. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, and then the whole thing about varying your angle – it's sort of like, um, you know, in the talks that I do, like on basic photography, it's the 90, you know, whatever percentage, a high percentage of the world is between 5.5 five and 6.5, right? Right. Pretty much everyone almost, you know, you know, yeah, you five, three people out there, I know you're going to yell at me and you seven foot people are going to yell at me. But pretty much the majority of the people fall within a certain height range, which means we, most of us perceive things at a similar level, you know, but if you break outside of that and and get an angle that isn't typically observed, you instantly add more interest to the shot. 
even even from a subliminal level like this one moving oh, yeah. to dog yeah. eye level or moving to child eye level or just doing something different shooting higher than than you know would normally be seen or much lower than normally would be seen you know you instantly change the composition and change the interest of what that shot is versus just hey i whipped out my camera snapped that and continued on with my day Right. And it's it's very much like, you know, going to a viewpoint and photographing a landscape, right, from the same point that everybody else shoots. You can change how the perception is from a regular shot or a traditional expected type of look to something that's unexpected. Mm -hmm. And getting down, you know, changing your angle makes that a little bit more unexpected and adds interest to the image. Um I, I mean, I, I really love this, and I think this is fantastic. I think the the background it has been added very, very well. I, I mean, on the on, on the puppy on the left, I can kind of, I mean, I can see some softness around, uh, you know, his or her head. I think you know, bringing in a little bit more of the hair texture. And I'm getting really picky, right? Because at at this point, this is a brilliant Photoshop job, mm -hmm. but you know, there should be a little bit more hair in there if you want to get picky. And the 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 big dog on the right. I would take the collar off. Um, mm. You've done all this other Photoshop work. The other dogs don't have a collar. I, I would probably remove his collar and just make it look like, you know, these are these are three very prestigious leaders of, you know, this corporation. And this is their, you know, yeah, this is their <laughs> this board is meeting. Their, <laughs> yeah, this is them. Right. Like this is like we are here. Yeah. You know, uh, okay. yeah, I dig it. I, I, I really I really like it. Very cool. Good work, Gigi. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Moving right along here. I think we're at the end of the road here with Stephen Scharf to round it all off. You know, we were, we were, uh, oh, let me read this first and I'll say this. Um, this is Pigeon Point at Pescadero Beach, Pescadero, California. This location off the well known Pigeon Point Lighthouse uh, was shot off the beach and cliff to the right of the lighthouse at sunset. It was very dark and foggy when I showed up, but got a five minute window where the fog lifted right at sunset. He shot this with his Fujifilm X-H1 14 millimeter F2.8. All right, what I was gonna say is, you know, pulling the shot up, you see how sharp this shot, this shot is? So uh, in one of the previous episodes, we were, we were, you know, sort of poking fun at Tim Engel and, and Stephen Sharp and saying that Stephen's name is Stephen Sharp because his images <laughs> are, <clears throat> are so sharp. Stephen commented in Twip Pro that Sharp actually means sharp in German. So, <laughs> so from henceforth, Stephen Sharp, I'm calling you Sharp. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, you are when you call him Stephen Sharp. Exactly, so yeah. you are, and you have been. I just have to put a German accent on there if I can muster them. <laughs> this this shot is really cool, and this goes to what you were saying before about that earlier shot about uh, doing a sort of a longer exposure to get some motion in mm -hmm. the waves. Mm -hmm. uh, he did that. Right. And we don't have any crashing waves on the rocks, but we can see plainly that this water was in motion and our sky is a little bit blurry um, on purpose. Got a little bit of motion yep. in there just to smooth that out a little. And the subject, what I was struggling with on this shot, not struggling, but where my brain always goes is and it's kind of, it's kind of twofold. It's what's the subject of this shot? Is there a subject of this shot or in the case of this shot? where I netted out is the whole shot is the subject. Like the shot is pigeon point. This is the, this, that's the subject of the shot. This rock in the foreground is not the subject. The cliffs aren't the subject. The water, the sky are not the subject together. The location itself is the subject versus having one, one thing in there. Now, if you were Troy Miller and you had a bride in a flowing dress on that rock in the foreground <laughs> blowing in the wind, <laughs> she would be the subject. Right? <laughs> Right, right, right. No, very true. No, this this is a spectacular image, and there's a lot to enjoy about looking at it. Um, I, I'm I'm sort of playing with whether or not I would crop off the foreground and crop out those rocks or not, and stick to the to the water, the coastline, and then the sky. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like it both ways. I do think what I would do is I would burn down uh, the rock in the lower right hand corner a little bit, and then. And then take the entire exposure of the entire image and bring it down, mm -hmm. so that the face of that 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 cliff on the right isn't as bright. And I think that the sky will get richer. It'll feel more moody. It'll feel like a storm, mm -hmm. you know, was there. The water will go darker, and I think it'll increase the mood. And I think it'll I think it'll help a lot, you know. And warm tones tend to overexpose anyway. So, yeah, 
Yeah, just, I can, just looking at the shot, I can almost hear. I can smell. I mean, it's California, right? So I can smell yep. the salt water. I can feel the breeze. I can hear the seagulls. You know, it's you can hear the the surfing, uh, the crash of the surf on the rocks. This is a uh, mm -hmm. yeah. This this image definitely does its job, Stephen. Good job. Man. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. And it's nice and sharp. And it's nice and sharp. Yes. Yes. Level horizon. You know, I mean uh -huh. that. It's. I guess we should point out on occasion the things that are right, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is Christmas, right? So come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice level horizon there. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Very good shot, Stephen. Thank you so much for submitting that. All right. Lots of lots of good submissions this time around, man. Right? What do oh, you? Yeah. Yeah. It's. This is getting good. This is. Uh, is this the last critique of the year? What does the calendar say? No, we've got yeah. one more. If I mean, if we do a show on New Year's Eve on the 31st, we have one more show to do. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't have to be special. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to, gonna... have to do something crazy. I think of something crazy to do for that one. Cool, man. Awesome. So good. Thank you, everyone, for submitting those images. Uh, this yeah. is a, this is, I'm, I'm always encouraged and humbled by the participation in Twip Pro and you know, all the uh, the great images that fly by, even the ones that aren't submitted into the critique, just the ones that go by and show and show and tell. And you know, people are in there sharing deals that they found around the web for for different camera specials and, you know, techniques and asking great questions and getting them answered. I love it. That's the whole reason Twip Pro exists is for that that sort of substantive interaction versus the the trolling that you might find in some other areas so right yeah. right and i would i would say there's probably more images if not as many in just the general photography chat and the show and tell yeah as there is in critique right i mean yeah. there's a lot of images in here yep. yep yep it's lovely it's lovely i love it well cool man all right before we go um i know people are probably wondering what is going on with that, uh, you look like someone someone hit you in an L bracket on your face. What, <laughs> what happened, man? What's what's the deal there? What'd you do? I was I was doing some deconstruction with a buddy of mine. We were tearing down a shed, and uh, I had goggles, I had ear protection, I had gloves. I was I was really being safe, and I was pulling down a, a piece of lumber, and there was a like a spacer block or something in there, like a little piece of two by four, and it came down and kissed me on the cheek. Oof. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, forever marking this episode of <laughs> the right. Right. Yeah, right. now we right. now we can sort of see next week. You know how 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 uh, you know how <laughs> Troy's healing powers. You know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see in a week how, if that thing is still there. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it'll probably be like this. <laughs> I know. I hang it out. <laughs> I have a big patch on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna draw a keep X. touching it, put germs in there. Leave it alone. Leave it. Alone. <laughs> All right. Jeez. Oh man, I love it. All right, man. Well, cool. I'll let you get on with your day. Um, and folks, thanks for participating in this episode this week in Photo Photo Critiques. If you want to become a member of Twip Pro, you know what to do. Just head over to twippro.com. You can sign up and become a member. We have a two-week free trial, so you can put your toe in the water over there and play around and uh, see if you like what's going on in there. And if you do, then you can keep your subscription going. It's a, it's a good time. Got lots, lots, lots of good, cool members in there keeping the yep. flow going and we do these things and there's more exciting stuff to come in 2019 you believe it's 2019 already it is no God, no this year no this year i mean i know it sounds contrived and old and cliche but this year just flew by it did literally <laughs> i mean faster than any year that i've that i've experienced so far maybe because there's just so much happening you know there's things just you know it's just things keep happening which you know you uh it tends to speed time up a little bit yep yep Yep, I agree. Yeah, this year's gone by fast. All right, man. All right, well, let's leave it at that. Uh, Merry cool. Christmas, everyone. I hope you get everything you wanted from Santa and whoever else is bringing you stuff. And uh, we'll see you next week, right before yep. the new year. Yep. Merry Christmas. Take care. Cheers. Peace. This is Twitter.